Hi guys, welcome to Cisco Nate. I hope this isn't your first video, but if it is, welcome to the team. Please comment, like, and subscribe. The more of you that do that, the better visibility this channel will get, and the more people that will use it. I hope you guys talk about this to your friends. Anyways, today's video is about how to enable HTTPS certificate authentication on the FMC. And while it may seem pretty simple due to normal organizational structures, this can actually be pretty challenging, especially in a federal environment because of the way workloads are siloed. So you've got the engineers who typically are maintaining the tools, and then you got somebody else who typically maintains the PKI authority uh, infrastructure. And so this video will help dispel any doubt about what has to be done and help guide you guys so that you can do everything from generating the certificate yourself, installing it on the box and verifying that it works. All right. And there's two main gotchas really uh, about why I wanted to get this video out there. And that is uh, if you generate a certificate using the built-in tool on the FMC, that will work most of the time, but there's a pretty big gap with the Chrome browser. See, Chrome requires what's called a subject alternative name, and it requires at least one of those SANs to match the canonical name, the CN. And so there's an issue because the FMC does not generate a certificate CASR with the SAN. So it'll probably work in IE, and it'll probably work in Firefox, but it will not work in Chrome, at least the current version. I'm not sure about future versions or if it's a bug. All I know is it doesn't work, and that is why. So the other issue that you'll run into is if you later want to use client authentication, then you have to take care of importing the private key and the certificate chain now because the HTTPS web certificate for the FMC, that certificate chain is what's actually used for the client authentication later on should you enable it. So this video is pretty important. It kind of builds a foundation. Look for the client authentication video after this one. All right, guys, have a good one. All right, so the requirements for this video, uh, turning on HTTPS certificate usage on the FMC today is gonna to require a few things. Uh, the first one is you have to have an FMC installed and available somewhere, whether it's virtual or physical, doesn't really matter at this point. The next thing you need is some sort of PKI certificate infrastructure. So I have like a Windows Server 2016, that's what I'm gonna be using for issuing my certificates. Uh, and then you need some sort of software to help generate the CSR for the FMC. Now, don't get me wrong, the FMC has the ability to generate a CSR. But the one thing it doesn't have is the ability to generate a CSR with what's called a subject alternative name. And this is not a problem for the population at large, but if you happen to be a Chrome browser user, which I am, then the subject alternative name not existing in the certificate for the FMC will cause certificate validation to fail, even though the common name is accurate and is valid. And I'll show you guys how to kind of debug all of this. I'll probably actually issue another video on common debugging methods for why is my certificate failing? And that would probably bring to light this issue had you issued a normal certificate. So in this case, I'm gonna be using uh, some software called Win64 OpenSSL. It's a port of OpenSSL that I find very useful. I'm gonna have a link to this guy's website because it is an amazing product he puts out there for free. If you can, use it, download it, donate to him, help keep his infrastructure running because this is an amazing tool for anybody who is not a Linux head. All right, and the last thing you need is a browser to test this whole setup once it's done. Thanks, I'll see you guys in a few. All right, so here we are. I think the, the first thing I wanna do is show you my current setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my FMC. And right now this FMC does have a certificate loaded into it. Uh, I got some feedback recently that my windows are a little small, not on putty or anything else, but on the actual web browser interfaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge those. You can see here it's at 150%. That's why it looks abnormally large, but that should make it legible to those of you who are viewing this on a laptop or tablet or some other smaller thing. All right, so I'm gonna go up to system, configuration. <clears throat> and once that loads, then I'm gonna navigate down to HTTPS certificate. Now you notice my host name, host name is fmc-a.ciscoNate.local. And you can see here, I'm currently using a certificate. It has indeed validated uh, as being a, a valid certificate. And uh, the subject here shows you that it's been given the correct uh, CN so that it identifies the same as my DNS name. 
and that's important for this to validate correctly throughout the whole thing. It's also issued by a certificate root CA that my desktop trusts and has subject alternative names that match the DNS name as well as the IP. And these two are very important subject alternative names, if they do not exist, will break a Chrome browser when it tries to validate the certificate. Other browsers are okay. I'm not sure if that's intermint, persistent, has always been there, will never be there in the future. Don't know, but it bothers it now. So we're gonna do the issue this certificate in a way that works on all browsers. All right, and the way I'm gonna show you this is I'm actually gonna generate a whole new certificate and install it. And I'm just gonna change the organizational unit name from Nate's division to Nate's second division. And that way you guys can see I did indeed change it and it is indeed validating correctly. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is you can generate a new CSR from here. But as I said before, the CSR is generated inside of this option do not give you the ability to add a subject alternative name. You can see our common name is the only field they expose. So that's not gonna work for us if we're trying to make this work on Chrome or browser agnostic across the board for those that require a subject alternative name. So what I'm gonna to turn to instead is a cool Windows port of OpenSSL. OpenSSL is kind of the standard library of uh, tools that are used to generate and manipulate certificates, keys, and all that. So I'm gonna go in the browser here and we're gonna get the software first as we always do. Win64 open SSL. Now that should bring up slproweb.com and that stands for Shining Light. Now this guy has an amazing tool. I think it's underappreciated, underused, uh, because again, OpenSSL is, open is the de facto standard. Uh, so what I'm gonna look for here is the developer install version. Now you probably won't need this, but I'm gonna use it anyways. So I'm gonna download the 164 developer version, 63 megs EXE. You can probably get away with the top one here if you're 64 bit, but download the appropriate version for your Windows deployment. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and re-download this. I've already done it once. And then I'm gonna run through the installer real quick just so you guys can see what it looks like. So we're gonna go through the whole install process. Yes, please install this on my computer. I accept the agreement. Next, yes, next, yes. We wanna put it, the DLLs in the Windows system directory. All the defaults basically work. So we're gonna click install. It's gonna completely overwrite everything that was already on my computer. I'm surprised it doesn't check and give you a warning, uh, but that's irrelevant to this whole scenario. So we're gonna let that install and uh, we're gonna go through kind of the, the background why I ended up having to do it this way was I had a certificate I generated and it wasn't working for Chrome. So in Chrome, if you happen to go up here and you enable the developer tools and you load a website that is not validating correctly, you can then scroll over to the security section here and it will literally say invalid certificate and the top reason why is because subject alternative name does not exist. So if you happen to be running into issues, this is a very cool little like applet or plugin you can use on Chrome to find out why it's failing specifically on Chrome. Anyways, that's how I found out what was going on and led me to this solution here. It looks like it has finished installing. You can uncheck the donation, but I would highly recommend you donate to this guy. It is a great tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the developer tab here now that it has finished installing. <clears throat> and the next thing I'm going to do is walk you guys through using the resources I provided to you, uh, how to generate this certificate. Now there's a million ways to generate certificates uh, through OpenSSL. This is just one of the many. So I'm gonna to go to my FMC HTTPS cert resources, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the configuration file. Now, one of the cool things about OpenSSL, all right, I'm gonna download it, uh, is that it allows you to build what's called a configuration file. And this configuration file allows you to kind of pre-configure all of the data or metadata in the certificate. So this is the template here. Um, the first three fields are required, or four fields, and should not be manipulated for this particular example. And as you can tell, it's kind of a hierarchical nested reference list here. You got distinguished name says, oh, for these uh, attributes, go to the rec distinguished name section, which is this section here. And then for requirement extensions, go to this section, which is this section down here. And then yet another reference to alt names, which is down here. So what's important with this file is you just wanna take everything between the carrots that I've provided and replace it with the appropriate data for your install. So I'm installing this certificate 
in the U.S. So according to the instructions here, I have to put the country, and it's a two-letter abbreviation. United States is U.S., if I can type. For the state, it's Virginia. For the locality, I'm going to choose Herndon. For the organization, I'm going to choose Cisco Nate. And for the department, I told you I was going to make this Nate's second division. And then the canonical name has to be the full name. So in this case, it's going to be fmca.ciscoNate.local. This CN name has to match exactly the DNS name that you're using to resolve your website. So in this case, this is mine. Now, for Chrome specifically, it requires subject alternative names and maybe other browsers are not picking on Chrome. The first subject alt name down here under DNS.1 must match your host name, your CN. After that, you can give it whatever else you want, including IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it my IP of the server. That way, if I navigate to it via IP or DNS name, it doesn't matter, it still works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this server cert example. I'm gonna name it server cert dot CNF. And I'm gonna save that. Let's go to my root C drive just to make things easy. Oh, I didn't run it as admin. All right, um, I guess I'll go to users and save. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got this configuration file. And this configuration file is going to be what I'm going to reference in my OpenSSL command that will generate the certificate. So let's close that. And I'm going to go back to the other file that I provided you guys. Now, this is the example command that you're going to execute in the application I showed you earlier. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Win 64 open SSL command prompt, perfect. Now I need to make sure I'm in the proper directory. This is the directory where that conf file is. That's where I just saved it, so that's great. And I'm just gonna take this command here, but I need to substitute everything between the carrots. Notice the pattern here. Um, and you can put this in a notepad and make sure you don't mess it up. So that's probably what I'm gonna do here to give me time to munge this data um, and verify it is correct so that I don't mess it up before putting it in the open SSL application. So I want the end certificate signing uh, request to be something that tells me it's for the FMC. So I'm just calling fmc.csr. I'm gonna create a private key. I'm gonna create a private key called fmc.key. And the configuration file I want it to use is the one I just finished saving. And that's gonna save me time if I have to repetitively generate these. I just go change that config file and then point this tool at it. So that was server cert.cnf. And we'll go ahead and copy this command now that it's fully formatted. And I will paste it into, whoop, did I not copy this? And then I will paste it. Oh, what is going on? Am I not clicking in the right spot? Oh, it's because I had not actually clicked in the application. There we go, all right. And then hit enter. Now, you notice it generated a private key. So if I navigate to my C drive, users, Ceratos, we should see an fmc.key, which we do have, and an fmc.csr, as well as the servercert.conf file that I saved there earlier. All right, so this is great. Now I've got the key, the CSR. Uh, don't need to do anything with the key right now or the conf file anymore. Now we need to take this CSR. All right, I'm gonna take this CSR and go to my certificate authority. And my certificate authority, I've actually generated a template that is going to enable the proper features for this certificate. Now, if any of you guys have not generated a cert certificate template 
for use with these. Most of you are probably engineers. You will need to do that. So I'll go ahead and break out into another section how to do that. Look for a card up here right above. Yep, oh, it should be popping up right about now. And I'll show you how to create a web server uh, certificate template that you can then expose and use on this server. Because most likely a lot of you are engineers doing POVs, POCs, you need to know everything from the ground up how to configure this. For now, I'm just gonna go with what I have already created and generated previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, uh, I'm just gonna go with the basic web server. We just need server authentication, and that's a key usage that is enabled with web server. So <clears throat> here, I'm gonna go ahead and click submit after grabbing the CSR contents that I generated already. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this with Notepad. I'm gonna copy everything from the beginning to the end, paste it in here, base64 web server template, which almost all servers come with by default, and hit submit. Now I'm gonna change this to base64, this is important, and download the certificate chain. This is important if you plan on doing client authentication in the end. The certificate chain that is inserted with the web certificate for the FMC is the same certificate chain that it validates the clients against. The chain, not the insert, just the chain. All right, so great, I've got a new certificate chain here. That certificate chain will have my server certificate as well as my root certificate. Now, if you have more than one, say an intermediate certificate, it'll show up here as well. You have a three or four or five tier, however many tiers you have. That is important later on when we manipulate this for doing other certificate stuff later. But for right now, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this certificate. I'm going to export it. Again, base64. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my desktop just so it's easy to find. I'm gonna call it fmc.cer. Okay, so I now have my FMC CER certificate generated and we're gonna come back here and now I should be able to say import HTTPS server certificate. And here is where we need that rest of the chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that P7B that downloaded which will be in our downloads folder. And I'm also going to export that root certificate. Export, next, base64, next. Desktop, root, CA, save. The name of the certificate here doesn't matter. The CN in the certificate is what matters. So you can call this whatever you want as long as you know it's the root certificate. Okay, so both those are exported. Now, I'm gonna come back to this screen on the FMC. We're gonna close everything else that we're not using anymore. I'm going to take the FMC certificate, open it in Notepad, paste that in the server certificate, because this is the FMC server certificate. I'm gonna take the root certificate, open it in Notepad, copy it, and paste it down in the certificate chain. Now the chain means everything but the server certificate. So if I had a three tier hierarchy, one root CA, one intermediate, and then my server, my server certificate would be here. The intermediate and the root would be down here. All right, and the last thing we need is the private key. And the private key is the key that was generated in my user Ceratos directory. So I'm gonna go back down to C Users, Zertos, fmc.key. Open with, no pad, and paste. And we're gonna hit save. Now if everything worked right, this should take a second as it's importing all of this information. And up here on the Nate's division OU, you should just see this change to Nate's second division. Now, again, if it's also working right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this browser entirely to make sure everything is flushed out of the system cache. I'm gonna close all these windows and I'm gonna reopen the browser. Let's navigate back to this FMC and see if it authenticates properly and validates here, and here we go. Yes, it did. I come here to check the details to make sure this is indeed the new certificate that's being presented, and yes, indeed, the OU is Nate's second division. 
So the, the two nuances that were really important here is some browsers require SAN like Chrome and you cannot use the native CSR generation tool in Firepower Management Center if you want this to be a certificate that is, is accepted by all browsers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close this out, call it a day, but don't forget to follow that other card if you need to know how to create the proper template with the proper key usages for the FMC. And don't forget to look out for another video that follows on this one. It dovetails off of the configuration for the web GUI certificate and allows you to enable what's called client certificate authentication. And that allows the server to look at the certificate that's on somebody's CAC card or machine in their user directory so that the server knows this is a valid person trying to use it. And that is also nested here under the same section. It's a checkbox which will open up additional configuration for you. So if you wanted to turn on client authentication, you would simply have to check the box that is down here and then it would use the certificate chain that you imported up here to validate each of the clients that are connecting to it. All right, guys, I hope you have a good one. I'll see you next time.